Today's episode of Agile Caravan Sarai is proudly sponsored by Emergence, the Journal of Business Agility. This quarterly publication brings you inspiring stories from the most innovative companies and explore themes of new ways of working, reclaiming management, and humanizing business. Each issue is hand illustrated and 100% content. Use the promo code LIGHTSPEED, L-I-T-H-E-S-P-E-E-D, to get a 10% discount on your annual subscription. Visit businessagility.institute forward slash emergence to find out more. As the COVID-19 pandemic rages on in most parts of the world, how are Agilists finding meaning and purpose in these troubled times? How can we connect, inspire, and support each other? In days gone by, Caravan Sarai's provided rest, recovery, and community for travelers along the ancient Silk Road. Similarly, we hope that our Agile Caravan Sarai episodes will provide rest, inspiration, and hope. We hope each episode will remind us of our shared Agile values and thus bring us closer together. In past episodes, we've heard from Agile Manifesto authors like Jim Highsmith, Kent Beck, and Alistair Coburn. We've connected with captains of industry like Michael Carroll from Nationwide Insurance. We've also heard from global Agile titans, including Rashina Hoda from Australia and Naresh Jain from India. As we begin to see the glimmers of hope for the end of the pandemic, Agilists continue to respond with resilience. This is a time for transformation. I invite you to join me as we continue to journey together. I'm Sanjeev Augustine, and this is Agile Caravan Sarai. Evan Laybourne is the CEO and co-founder of the Business Agility Institute. The Business Agility Institute champions and supports companies that are agile, innovative, and dynamic. In other words, perfectly designed to thrive in today's unpredictable markets. Evan's experience and background have driven his work in business agility, and he regularly speaks on business agility-related topics, both at local and international industry conferences. As well as leading the Business Agility Institute, Evan is also the author of a couple books, Directing the Agile Organization, published in 2012, and Hashtag No Projects, A Culture of Continuous Value, published more recently in 2018. Evan believes that agile business management is primarily about change, changing how we think, changing how we work, and changing how we interact. And so I've known Evan for the better part of a decade and know that he firmly believes a few foundational things, primarily that by accepting, embracing, and shaping change across our organizations, we can take advantage of new opportunities to outperform and outcompete in the market. Evan Laborn. Thank you, Sanjeev. It's really good to speak to you again. Um, I've always enjoyed our conversations. Melbourne is good. Um, uh, COVID lockdown is uh, waxing and waning. Some (laughs) weeks we go back in, some weeks we come out, but vaccinations are slowly rolling out. So um, hopefully we'll reach critical mass and there's some semblance of uh, whatever comes after COVID, which is going to be exciting. So no, life is, c'est la vie, such is life. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, in fact, I was speaking with Rashina, Rashina Hoda, I believe you know her about well, and she was talking about how everything went from normal, near normal to lockdown a few, you know, like a, a few days uh, later. That's it. It's, uh, it's interesting seeing the, the agility of uh, a, a nation emerge in a time of crisis like this, where you've got uh, sudden surprising uh, disruptions in the case of, in our case, a spike in COVID cases and seeing how quickly a a nation or a state can respond. So agility is not just for tech teams anymore. (laughs) Never was actually in my mind at least. So um, Evan, we have a a clear format over here. So I want to sort of uh, kick off with the first question that we'd like to ask all of our guests. And that is, it's been the, it's been 20 years since the signing of the Agile Manifesto. And uh, looking back, and what are your thoughts about uh, 
agile as such as it exists uh, in, I guess, the summer of 2021 is where we are today. And so sort of a look back, if you will, from your perspective, and you have a really global perspective with the Business Agility Institute. So I've been involved in the agile world since 2003 is when I first started using Scrum and XP. This is before Kanban and SAFE. Um, I still remember the Scrum XP wars, uh, which dates me a little bit. Uh, and it was interesting to see Agile as a, it was a counterpoint. It was a response to this um, overemphasis on um, software engineering, and I'm talking like software crisis from the 60s versions of software engineering, where everything had to be like documented to death. And it would take years to bring a product to market. And so Agile, it, it was very, it was very logical for Agile to emerge. And definitely when I was using it, it was as a, it was as a counterpoint. It, it's this thing with all these system specifications and solutions architecture, system architecture, and 27 documents before you write a line of code wasn't particularly very effective. But it, what's been interesting to see is that Agile with a capital A has gone from being the counterpoint, the, the push, to now being the dominant uh, de facto form of delivering technical products. What has started to change, and certainly given my role with the Business Agility Institute, is seeing business agility, uh, agility or agile outside IT, it's called agile business and business agility as two different things um, start to emerge. If I'd walked into a bank in 2003 or 2008 when I started getting into business agility and said, let's create an agile organization, I would have been laughed out of the room. I wouldn't have been allowed in the room. Yeah. Um, but now every single bank, every insurance firm and factory around the world is looking for Agility, business agility. Which is fantastic, yeah. Um, and you've certainly been at the spearhead of uh, a lot of this work. So I wanted to ask the second question is, uh, how are things for you? You're in, we're still sort of back and forth in pandemic. How, how, how are you doing personally? You got a little okay, cat there and a daughter as well. <laughs> so I'm a single father. So my daughter is with me. And um, I will admit going... Uh, running a global professional association and raising a child at the same time is distracting. Um, but there's opportunity in every challenge. So my daughter and I are uh, closer than ever before. There are certainly challenges. And right now my challenge is reducing her, the amount of screen time that she has. Oh, for reference, she's nine years old. So um, right now screen and like computer games are a crutch, which we're trying to back off from. But uh, this is where I suppose I just have to be empathetic to the situation and understand my own challenges and try and lean on those around me for support. It's look, don't get me wrong, it's challenging, but I've learned more about who I am and what I can do through these challenges. Thanks for sharing that, Evan. And then um, straight into our final question, which is uh, we're looking at a very, very different world post pandemic. Right? And you, you have some of that uh, data back on, behind you on, your, on the chart. Um, what are you seeing and what words of hope and inspiration would you give to a, a, a new generation of Agilists as well as the previous gener generation of Agilists? Agilists, Lord knows we all need, uh, <laughs> we need hope and healing and growth coming out of this uh, you know, devastating pandemic. So from well, us, what's your I think hope is a good word. Um, and we've seen that in a lot of our research and we're seeing that in a lot of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So for example, we just released a paper on the relationship between diversity, equity and inclusion and business agility. And that tells us that we're not doing great. In fact, we're, we're actually doing quite poorly in a lot of spaces. But again, there is hope. Right? There are things that can be done. COVID-19 has given an unprecedented opportunity for organizations to uh, embrace ambiguity, to embrace uncertainty. And those companies who have, are they're a lot more effective and successful even before COVID. Uh, and those organizations that have not, well, many of them sadly don't exist. It all, and, but 
I'll remind everyone listening just why we do this. We're not creating agile organizations because we want to. We're not creating them because they're fun. We're creating them because it's better. It is better for customers because we create products that are what they need and what they want rather than what we think they want. We're actually listening to them. We're actually creating that, embedding that feedback across all aspects of our business. It's better for employees because you and I spend uncounted hours at work, even at home. And of course, we're all at home these days. But this little black device in our pockets, uh, this the mobile phones and the laptops keep us always permanently connected. We work. We spend more time working than we do with our families. We spend more time working than we do any other part of our life. And that's not a criticism. That's just a statement of fact. Uh, so if work is such a large part of our life, surely it should also be one of the best parts of our life. And that's where this becomes uh, almost a moral element of creating empowerment and engagement. Uh, uh, autonomy, mastery and purpose, as Dan Pink talks about. Uh, I talk about competence, empathy and uh, confidence as three keys of success. The key one for this topic is empathy. Uh, understand and work with your peers. These are all elements of agility and business agility. And so this is what we're seeing. This is what I'm. This is what I'm hopeful for in seeing those organisations who can create those better ways of working, those better ways of being, those better companies, better for customers, better for employees, and at some point also better for shareholders because that's also important. So uh, that's the hope I have. And we're seeing around the world, uh, globally, companies ad adopting this. Uh, at the end of last year, we did an analysis of companies around, like, in different regions and their adaptation and adoption to business agility. Um, Asia grew drastically by about 25%. Um, America sadly decreased by about 10% in that same period. But uh, what we're now looking at is a year later or about nine months later, what has been the impact to America and to the rest of the world as COVID becomes something that we live with rather than something that is a disruptor uh, as vaccinations roll out. So we'll see how that all goes. It's exciting. May you live in exciting and interesting times, the old times. <laughs> okay, same. Well, thank you so much, Evan, for joining us. I really appreciate you, appreciate you taking the time. And it's, I'm sure folks from around the world would be uh, uh, excited and enthusiastic about what you have to say with me. Well, I appreciate it. And always good to chat to you, Sanjeev. Thank you. Thank you.